what do you think, I, I know we describe it as addictive, but what do you think the allure is with individual stock picking? Because people have read our work, they're familiar with your work, they know the value of index funds, and even us, we're still tempted to just right. like try. Is it is it just as simple as fun, like something a little bit risky, or do you think there's a deeper, more psychological allure to stock picking? Walk when it's time to walk. People don't, you know. Ball players who can't play anymore. Assholes trying to maintain a standard of living not possible anymore. A lot of those around. Wow, what a what a great, great, great question. <laughs> <laughs> I so I think there's a lot of it. I mean, I, I always cringe when people say, you know, I that they they enjoy investing or it's fun. I've seen you be half a million dollars up. I've been up two and a half million dollars. What do you got on you? Nothing. What'd you put away? Nothing. And it's like, I, my attitude is, I don't expect my money to do anything other than work for me. I don't expect yeah. it to entertain me. I don't, so, you know, I, I have other sources of fun, but I get that because when I was an active investor, it was fun. But I think more fundamentally, and maybe I'm, I'm about to describe my own psychology and shouldn't paint with a broad brush, but I think that smart people, and I think I'm one of them, and I think you guys fall into that category, have a lot of trouble wrapping their head around the fact that doing nothing, as Jack Bogle says, is more effective than the effort they can put in. You get up two and a half million dollars. Any asshole in the world knows what to do. You get a house with a 25-year roof, an indestructible Jap economy shitbox. You put the rest into the system at three to five percent to pay your taxes, and that's your base. Get me? That's your fortress of fucking solitude. And that puts you for the rest of your life at a level of fuck you. Right. So mm -hmm. you look at it, and and this was the argument in my head when I was first resisting indexing, and you say, well, this is insane. Somebody wants you to do something, fuck you. Boss pisses you off, fuck you. Own your house, have a couple bucks in the bank, don't drink. That's all I have to say to anybody at any social level. I mean, if I buy an index and I buy, you know, the S&P 500 or I buy the total stock market, all I need to do to, to outperform that is just to avoid buying the really bad companies. And I'm certainly smart enough to avoid the bad companies. Or all I need to do is just like buy the few really good companies. And that just seems so reasonable and logical. And But all the research indicates that it, it doesn't work. And my theory is that, you know, today's, um, you know, today's high flying great company is, is, you know, tomorrow's disaster potentially. And today's yeah. dog is tomorrow's great turnaround story. Uh, Mr. 1500 oh. uh, put up a post, I think, yesterday. And he, he, there's some statistic that I wasn't aware of that most publicly traded companies only last 20 years or 21 years. And he made the point that if you're picking individual stocks, you kind of have to res resign yourself to the fact that you're going to outlive most of the companies you invest in. And I didn't know that. I knew there was huge turnover. I mean, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, for instance, those 30 stocks, there's not a single one anymore that, that was on the original list. Uh, the S&P 500 turns over routinely. That's one of the things I love about index funds. They're what I call self-cleansing. So I don't have to worry about what category or what company is going to rise to the top because I'm going to own it. And I'm going to benefit from the, you know, multiple hundreds of percents that it can possibly go up. And those that fade away, I don't have to figure out those either. They'll just fade away on their own. And it's a rigged game because, you know, the most you can lose is 100%. But you can gain <laughs> tens of thousands of percent on the upside. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Most people we meet think the hardest part about investing is demystifying financial jargon and finding the money to invest. But that's only half the battle. Because after you've understood the basics and collected your coins, the real work begins. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Cashing Out the Podcast. To see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to turn on your notifications. To get your copy of Cashing Out the Book, visit Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, 
or download the audiobook on Audible.